trust, uh, you know, some of the advice they're giving. I think Enron is bound to have some favorable fallout in various areas. I mean, it, 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 to the extent that it causes people to look more carefully at how various entities behave and that sort of thing. I, no, I, I, I think Enron was a plus uh, for the American economy. And the truth is our capital system, you know, despite all kinds of excesses and errors and everything else, you know, one way or another we've come up in this country with 50 odd percent of the world's market value for four, four and a half percent of the world's population. So, you know, it's, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not negative on how the American capitalist system <clears throat> has de developed. I, I do get negative about how certain people behave within that system, but, you know, they would behave badly in any system. So, uh, the, you know, it's the human condition. But that is, you know, Charlie and I still think we should criticize things that we think are improper, but we don't criticize the whole system in, in any way, shape, or form. It's, a, you know, it's been a tremendous economic machine. Uh, in this country. Uh, but I would say that a market system, and I don't have anything better than, in fact, I think a market system is responsible in a material way for the prosperity of this country. So I, I, I have no substitute in mind for the market system. I do think it produces extraordinarily inequitable results in terms of some overall view of humanity. Uh, and that that should be largely corrected by a tax system. I don't think it should be any comparable worth system or anything like that. I, I just, the idea of the government trying to sign all that just strikes me, strikes me as wild. But the market system lets a fellow like me, you know, make so much money because I know how to allocate capital, you know, compared to a great teacher, nurses, cancer, whatever. I mean, it just it just showers rewards on somebody that has this particular skill at this particular time. And that's great for me, but it should, there, in a really prosperous society, that should, there should be some corrective aspects to that because uh, uh, it, it, it really strikes me as inappropriate uh, that the spread of prosperity in a hugely prosperous economy should be de decided totally by the quirks of skills that come into play and get rewarded so hugely from the market system. So I, I, I but I, you know, I believe that that's why I believe in a progressive tax system and so on. Uh, I would say in terms of investment banking particularly, I mean, I was standing one time with an investment banker, he, looked, he was looking out the window and he said, just look, he says, as far as you can see, Nobody's producing anything. And I said, yeah, that seems to be a mandate they take pretty seriously, too. <laughs> that, uh, it, you know, there is a huge amount of money in a system, you know, with 14 trillion or whatever it may be of market values, and where people are spending other people's money in corporations, and where the more you spend for something, sometimes you get gets equated with value, as in fairness opinions and all of that sort of thing. It's quite disproportionate to what uh, I really think the ultimate contribution to the country is of various people. But I don't have a better system to substitute for it. I don't want, to, I don't want anybody to think, come away thinking that I think we ought to tinker with that very much. Uh, I think that the, I think your tax system should be the way that you distribute the prosperity in a somewhat better way. When, when we ask people to go to war, you know, or that sort of thing, uh, it, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't take the person that's made the most money and say, well, they benefited the most from society, so we'll send them and put them in the front lines or anything like that. I mean, we there's various aspects of being a citizen in this country that I think should make sure the people that don't get the great tickets for that make them prosper in a in a market side, they still should do pretty darn well, as far as I'm concerned, and. And really, people like me should, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to compensate me uh, the way this world has. And it wouldn't have happened if I'd been born in Bangladesh or it wouldn't happen if I'd been born 200 years ago. You know, somebody, another one of those genie stories. Imagine, you know, when I was 24 hours before I was born and there'd been some guy with exactly my DNA right next to me. 
who was also going to be born in 24 hours. And the genie had come to the two of us and said, we're now going to have a bidding contest. And the one that bids the most of their future income gets to be born in the United States, and the one that loses in this is born in Bangladesh. And what percent of your future income will you give to be born in the United States? I'd have gone pretty high in the bidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that would have been an interesting test of how, how important I thought my own abilities were compared to the, to the soil in which I was going to be planted. So I, I uh, you know, I, I feel I'm lucky, and I am lucky, I mean, obviously. Uh, but I think we ought to figure out ways to take care of the people that are less lucky, and I think that investment bankers should consider themselves in the lucky part of society. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with what they do. Raising capital for American business is a fine thing and all that. I just think that they they are paid in relation to the talent and that sort of thing they bring to the game. I think they're paid obscenely high, but I think that's true of me, too. <laughs> Charlie? Yeah, the, um, but I would argue that the general culture of investment banking has deteriorated over the last 30 or 40 years. And it, I remember we issued a little bond issue one yeah, way back. Six, at six million. Diversified retailing. <laughs> yeah. and. We had yeah. these very high-grade investment bankers from Omaha and Lincoln, and they cared terribly whether their customers, whom they knew, were going to get their money back. Yep. And they fussed over every clause in the indenture, and they talked about whether we were really okay. And so that was a very uh, admirable process that we were put through. Yeah, we, we were screened. In a... We were screened and intelligently screened. And I may not have been too intelligent to let us through, but it, but it was an intelligent process. And I'd say the culture on Wall Street lately has drifted more and more to anything that can be sold at a profit will be sold at a profit. Yeah. Can you sell it? That's the question. Can you sell it is yeah. the moral test. That is not an adequate test for investment banking. And there, there used to be two classes of investment bankers, too, really. I mean, there were the ones that, that did the screening and all of that, and then there was a, a really low-class element that, that, that essentially merchandised securities no matter what they were. And there were clear lines, but the lines have disappeared. Yeah, so uh, it hasn't been good to have this deterioration of standards in, in, in high finance. And uh, will it ever swing back? You would certainly hope so. You can see why we were so popular at Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> but in fairness, we had very effective investment banking service from Solomon. That is true. That is true. And, and we, when we sold the B stock, for example, now, we set the rules. And, and they wouldn't have done it that way necessarily, but they did a very good job of doing it the way we asked them to do it. And, and so we, we said we don't want people hyped into the stock. We want a very low commission, and we're going to issue as much as the market takes so that nobody gets excited about the aftermarket behavior and buys because they think it's a hot issue. I mean, we, we set a bunch of rules we thought were rational, and Solomon did a terrific job of following through on that and doing exactly what we, we asked them to, and it was it was successful by our standards. So, uh, no, I, I, I would say they did a terrific job in that And case. they thoroughly enjoyed doing it. People yeah. out working on the job, well, they'd never That's done true. one like it before. That's true. Yeah. We've changed our whole opinion here in a matter of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's a lesson in that. Uh, Certain kinds of clients get a higher quality service than other kinds of clients. In fact, there are many clients who should never be accepted at all at investment banking houses. Yet you know, they are. Are you thinking of the fellow in Normandy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, can you imagine that guy getting in the door? I mean, it, it blows your mind. Uh, I mean, he went to jail subsequently. Uh, they should have. Uh, he was married to his high school teacher who was at least two decades older than he was. Charlie has more opinions on this kind of thing than I do, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, 
there were enough peculiarities in the situation. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it so peculiar except that he was a man and she was a woman. 